This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. For the first time, Katie is alone with Ariel. She spends time bonding with her daughter. Well, I finally got her breastfeeding, and we were laying there enjoying each other. She's got these big, beautiful eyes. I started to feel just this ache in my lower abdomen. It was kind of like a cramp, but not really. Just hurt. I was not concerned about the pain and thinking, mm, maybe it's, you know, I just had a big baby. It's just a normal little glitch, and it'll go away as I rest. But a few hours later, as Katie bathes Ariel, the pain in her belly is still there. And it started to be more present on my mind. Constant and kind of intensifying. I was growing more concerned as the pain was not going away. That's when I called the midwife. She said, well, you just had a really big baby without any drugs. This is natural and normal for you to be a little sore down there. After speaking with the midwife, Katie takes an over-the-counter pain reliever. Then that afternoon, she lies down while the baby naps. But by the evening, when Al checks on his wife, he notices an alarming change. I looked at Katie, and she was starting to swell. She looked not quite like she was pregnant again, but she looked like she had put on 15 pounds in her midsection. You know, you don't want to be paranoid. You don't want to be a hypochondriac. But I'm now concerned. Al suggests that Katie make an appointment with a doctor. But she insists on trying to wait out the pain. I hate hospitals, and I do not want to leave my baby. And soon, Katie's symptoms become impossible to ignore. The next morning, Al is giving a music class at the house. Katie is resting upstairs with the baby and her mother, who is visiting for the day. We got about 25 minutes into the lesson, and my mother-in-law comes out and leans into me and says, Katie wants to go to the ER. And that's very concerning. She doesn't like doctors, and now she's asking to go to the ER. The pain got more intense, and I was done. I got to go to the hospital now. In the ER, nurses check Katie's vitals and discover her blood pressure is dropping. They were very worried right away. Something was really wrong with me. By the time Katie is transferred to a hospital bed, she is drifting in and out of consciousness. So nurses hook her up to intravenous fluids and give her a round of antibiotics. Now, with her condition worsening, Katie is placed in a medically induced coma to protect her brain. Soon after, Katie is transferred to the intensive care unit, where her case is taken over by surgeon Dr. Samir Crete. And when I saw Katie, she was in extremely critical condition. She was in full-blown septic shock. Septic shock is a life-threatening condition triggered by an infection in the bloodstream. If severe enough, it can trigger organ failure and eventually death. Dr. Crete knows that septic shock is a sign that something is poisoning Katie's blood, and he has a theory what it could be. He examines her abdomen, where she's been experiencing severe pain. It was also swollen, so evidence is pointing that the infection is coming from the abdomen. Dr. Crete and his team order a CT scan of Katie's belly. It reveals severe damage to multiple organs, requiring an immediate and extensive operation. Katie has the uterus, the ovaries, and all the colon removed. With the operation, Dr. Crete and his team can stop the infection from spreading. They're also able to identify the disease Katie has been battling. It's revealed that Katie has a group A streptococcal infection. Group A streptococcus are bacteria commonly found in the throat and on the skin. However, inside Katie's body, the bacteria have spread to her vital organs, 
where they are attacking her cells, triggering her inflammation and debilitating pain. I was confused. I know you get strep in your throat. How can that be life-threatening? How could this be killing my mom right now? Strep bacteria are normally found in the throat or on the skin, but sometimes they make it past the body's normal defenses and enter the bloodstream and other tissues where they're not normally found. This situation is known as an invasive strep infection, and it can lead to several life-threatening conditions. For days after the surgery, Katie remains in critical condition in the ICU. Her daughter, Amber, holds vigil at her bedside. And one morning, she notices a disturbing change. So I'm in the room with my mom, telling her that when she got home, that I would paint her fingers and toes for her because we like to do nails together. It was at that point when I looked at her nails that I started noticing that my mom's fingers and toes have started to turn black. This was just so crazy. All I can think about is how fast my mom was going downhill. Doctors explain that during treatment, Katie's blood pressure dropped so severely that blood stopped flowing to her extremities. It led to a life-threatening skin disorder known as papura fulminans. She had a serious infection in the fingers and toes. There was a lack of function. To stop the spread of the disease, doctors rush Katie into surgery. Over the course of two months, while Katie lies in a drug-induced coma, doctors carry out multiple operations to save her life. Miraculously, Katie survives. So when I woke up, I saw my husband staring at me. I said, what happened? said, you had a, a virus in your blood. It almost killed you. But Katie's perseverance has come at a cost. He said, you lost a bunch of skin. And you lost your limbs. The moment that I realized that I lost my limbs was devastating shattering. I hated myself after signing the paperwork to agree to the amputations. But the infection, it was just going to continue to ravage her. She was going to die. It was really hard. <laughs> it was really shocking. <laughs> <laughs> 